Hey everyone, it's Natalie. I'm back today with another video. Um, by the way, if you guys like or dislike the videos that I'm making, please just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down so I know at least I'm doing a good job or if I just really am not doing a good job and this is not what I should be doing as videos. Um, please let me know and subscribe, guys. Um, I just started my channel and... Um, so I'm trying to get more subscribers and I'm trying to get some feedback. If you could give me a comment or anything, I'd appreciate it. But today is uh, the narcissistic in in injury is what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, hopefully this is a shorter video. It's just whenever you get into narcissism and there's just, you've been through so much that uh, there's so much to say, right? So I'll keep it short and sweet, hopefully. Um, so when you cause an injury, here it goes again with my dog. Mr. Handicapable Henry, um, when you cause a narcissistic injury, you better watch out, guys. Uh, seriously. So, what happens um, when you cause an injury to the narcissist is more than likely they're going to discard you for a short time. More than likely, um, they will go around and spread rumors and lies and gossip about you to their flying monkeys, okay? Um, when you injure a narcissist, um, which they injure you all the time, but, you know, you just have to deal with it, right? They, in their head, um, have to punish you. Okay, so they are trying to punish you by discarding you, even though they're really not done with you. They want to teach you a lesson. They want to make sure you learn that lesson. So they're going to discard you, ignore you. It's almost a form of no contact, except they come back and hoover you. And the hoover, when they do come back, is when they uh, call you or maybe text you or even go on social media and tag you in something and say something nice, that's a hoover. Um, it could also be a negative thing. They could hold something over your head that you told them in confidence because remember I told you narcissists like to fish for information about your personal life, especially your childhood. And let's say, let's use the positive uh, Hoover and then we'll do the, di uh, the negative Hoover. So the positive Hoover will be, uh, they'll call you all of a sudden. Uh, usually after a, like they'll discard you, usually the call will come down, like they'll hoover you around a holiday. Okay. Because one thing I'm going to do a thing about narcissism, narcissistic people and holidays too. But one thing about holidays is the narcissist does not want you to focus on anything else besides them. So they will hoover you to cause you to not focus on Christmas, not focus on your birthday or any other celebration. They want to make sure you're living in misery and you are not um, forgetting about them. So because they discard you, and let's say it's a holiday, they all of a sudden on Christmas you'll get a phone call out of the blue. Hi! They act like nothing's happened. Guess what? I got two plane tickets to go to wherever. Would you like to go with me? All paid trip. Would you like to go on vacation with me? And you're sitting there on the phone, like, or even in person, however they do the Hoover. And you're sitting there like, I haven't talked to you in a month or more. Like, what do you mean? Do I want to go on holiday with you? Like, I thought you were mad at me. I thought, um, I thought that, um, you know, you didn't want anything to do with me. You were going around spreading rumors and lies and people came and told me like, what do you mean? But you don't say that to them. You're thinking it, right? Because the narcissist by this time has already trained you not to talk about why they were mad at you, why you were discarded. They don't like to talk about it. They like to shove it under the rug until it's a mountain and then you explode on them and then they can turn around and say, see you flying monkeys, I told you. I told you flying monkeys that, um, Henry, leave me alone. Uh, I told you flying monkeys, she's like that. Remember when I told you? She, 
She's she has a screw loose in her head. She's not a nice person. Remember flying monkeys? They do that. So they don't want to talk about why they've discarded you. They just want to hoover you with like the carrot, like I've always used the carrot in front of your face. Like, would you like this? So you forget about what the celebration is all about, even on Christmas. And now you're being hoovered, which is a really uncomfortable situation to be in because you're sitting there in a good mood. It's a celebration that you're trying to um, celebrate, whatever. It could be a birthday. It could be Christmas. Um, and especially if it's their birthday, they definitely will hoover you. And if you don't call them on your birthday, trust me, you will, they will talk crap about you to flying monkeys uh, or whoever will listen. Sometimes they tell the wrong people and those people have already recognized what they are and they come back and tell you. See, they're not the flying monkeys. The flying monkeys are the ones that come and uh, try to get information out of you. Why you're not talking to the narcissist. What was the argument about? What was whatever it is. Why they discard you. Why? They're trying to get your point of view so they can go back and tell the narcissist because this is the way they communicate. They don't face-to-face -face talk to you about why they discarded you. They just want to hoover you. Usually, it's with something positive, but they also hoover with negative. Uh, so... They get their flying monkeys to do their dirty work, right? So they don't necessarily, when they're asking you, hey, would you like to go on vacation? Hey, would you like me to buy you a new house? I mean, really, uh, this is a Hoover. Um, they um, will get their monkeys to go make see if you're still mad at them, okay? They'll get their monkeys to uh, see how you still feel about the situation and about them. They want to make sure they haven't lost their supply. So they have to make sure that uh, you haven't went no contact with them uh, because the narcissist knows that eventually you will get tired of this BS. Like they know eventually one day you are not going to let them back in your life. They know this. This is a mind game. This is a, a, a game of chess with them. Your life, your emotions, your feelings, your opinions are a game of chess. Seriously. They want to know if they made the right move and if they still have more moves that they can make before you're king or queen of the game. Because when you become king or ki queen of the game and you win the game of chess, that means you have went no contact. And that means you, lo you they lost the game and you've won. That you are a winner. And remember, remember guys, narcissists cannot lose. They cannot lose. That's why when you eventually do go no contact with them, they go around to their flying monkeys and whoever else will listen and badmouth you and make sure that if you go crying to them, trying to get any sympathy for, from anyone, trying to make you feel good, better about the situation to make you justified to make uh to make you know go talk to someone to make yourself feel better so you're not living with guilt they make sure before you do that that they've already done it they want to spoil your name before you can go and tell your side of the story to anybody to get any reassurance that you are in the right and now half them half of them are flying monkeys and they're just going to take that information what you tell them and go back and tell uh, the narcissist. The other half have already seen what the narcissist is. Except, see, the thing is, is they've they've know they know uh, what to say and what not to say around these people, right? They're smarter than the narcissist. So what they'll do is the narcissist will go tell uh, someone that's not a flying monkey about the situation, and those people don't believe them. They don't believe them. They're usually the people that. Uh, uh, that you could come that come around you and hold you and hug you and say it's going to be okay I'm on your side I see it I know what you are talking about I see that she is not right or he is not right I see it guys so they're always on your side they're the ones that come out of the woodwork when you uh, when you go no contact and they say we're right there with you we're standing with you you are in the right we have seen you get abused numerous times we have heard the narcissist come and tell us things that we had no right to know 
Like, there was no reason for them to come tell us your personal information. That wasn't right. So the narcissist wants to make sure that you don't feel that way, that you uh, that you haven't completely won the game of chess. So they will hoover you. And usually, uh, something like that, like a good hoover, is usually when you, they have found out that you are tired of it. That you're no longer going to um, put up with it. So they'll come around and saying, uh, well, guess what? For Christmas, do you want to go skiing with me? Do you want to go to Europe with me? You want to go to Africa with me? You want to go to Asia with me? Like, oh, guess what? I got your son a brand new uh, bike. Guess what? I got your child a college education fund. Those are positive hoovers, right? Then you have the negative hoovers. Where they have found out that you went around trying to get sympathy for the reason why they've discarded you. You went and talked to people about it, and they have found this out. Um, or you've pay posted dumb stuff on social media, which one of the rules is you don't post anything on social media about them or how you feel. Um, and they see that you're talking crap. So they'll do a negative hoover, right? They'll threaten you. And this could even be negative Hoover, could be a no contact Hoover too, where they're like, dangle the carrot, remember the carrot. Oh, well, this is like what my in-laws did to my husband. Well, since you're going no contact with us and you no longer want to be in our life, I need to make sure I change the name on my family will. So if I get sick and I die or I need somebody for emergency contact, um, I have to make sure that the person on the name on the will is the correct person to help me. That's a negative Hoover. That's somebody that's trying to guilt trip you. That is somebody who is trying to cause conflict in your life because Hoovers are nothing but conflict. Because even if it's a negative Hoover and it makes you feel good, you're still stuck in the dark wondering why the hell. Did you discard me? Because they will never tell you. And if you go into it, this is what they'll do. They'll do cognitive dissonance on you. When you say, well, you did this, this, and that, and, you know, I don't appreciate it. I, I take responsibility uh, for my actions because empaths and, and regular people take uh, responsibility for their actions, and they'll say, I apologize. But when it comes to the narcissist, you'll never get an apology. So when you confront them and you say, can we talk about it? This is what I didn't like about the situation. They will say they never said or did anything. That You are confused. I promise you, this is what happens. And they even might flip it around and say, well, actually, you said that. You did that. That wasn't me. And they my nephew. They're trying to trick your brain. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. It can make you matter. It could not validate how you saw the situation. It doesn't validate how you feel. It doesn't validate why they discarded you. It doesn't validate that, guys. They don't talk about anything. So after the discard happens and they come back with the hoover... You're still stuck in the dark. And then you go right back through the cycle. Because it's a cycle, guys. This whole discard of them doing that to you is a cycle. And if you really stand back, you think of all the times they discarded you, didn't talk to you, and then surprise, boom, a hoover comes. Think about how many times that cycle has happened to you. And how many times you fell victim to, to them saying, hey, let's go on a holiday. And then you never talk about why. And then you're sitting there on holiday with them really super uncomfortable and not acting yourself because they train you not to be yourself, not to have your own personality, that you are going to please them. You have officially uh, become a, a narcissistic people pleaser. You are pleasing the monster. So then you're sitting there uncomfortable in front of the narcissist on a holiday because the Hoover got you, it trapped you. And now you feel like you're going to kiss their ass because they brought you on holiday. They don't want you to enjoy your holiday. They want you to be in pain. They want you to focus on them. Because the holidays and narcissists, 
they don't interact with each other because the narcissist always has to have the spotlight on them. You can never enjoy a holiday without the narcissist ruining it. Ever. Think about all the holidays. Think about how they only have to have the holidays. If you decide to go on your spouse's side uh, for the holidays, they put a pity party on you like no other. Oh, how can you do this to me? I'm your mother. I put you through college. They start rubbing things in your face that they've done for you in the past because the focus isn't on them for once. And when they do have their way and you have a holiday at their house, it's perfect. It's a perfect, like, out of the magazines. Like, you're so uncomfortable. Like, you're like, what the hell's going on? Do I, is this La La Land? Because it's almost like you're in their La La Land. Because that's what I call their mind. Like, they live in La La Land. And then you're put into that La La Land. And you don't know what to do but to kiss their ass. That's the truth. So, watch out, guys. Uh, for the discard because there's always going to be a Hoover right after and the this Hoover uh, is named after the vacuum cleaner because they literally will suck your ass back in excuse my language and then they'll spit you right back out like a like a vacuum they don't care about you they don't care that they didn't talk about why they discarded you they don't care um, what your opinion is what your feelings are about them doing that they don't care that's, it's plain and simple. They don't care. Only their opinions and decisions matter. And you better go along with the Hoover because if not, they're going to go around talking more crap until you go back to them. And they'll never answer for talking about all that crap that talked about you. Telling your intimate, most personal details to people that have no right to know your information. Like, they just go blabber their mouth to make you look like a bad person. That's why I'm saying, when they come around trying to be sentimental and trying to figure out what's happened in your life or what has taken place in your life right now, they will use any information that has, if it has been a trauma towards you, if it has been um, a negative uh, experience for you in your life, they will use that, turn it around, use it against you. And they will go tell everybody about that negative experience about that bad thing that happened to you they will go tell everybody you keep your personal information to yourself when you're dealing with the narcissist you don't let them know what's happening in your life as it is because i can tell you because i had already figured her out before we went no contact i didn't play her games that's why she didn't like me because i read right through her. i'm an empath i know I know when someone's not acting right. When you're not having empathy or sympathy or if someone's opinions and feelings don't matter. Oh, baby, please. I know. You can feel it. When you go around a narcissist, you can feel their energy like that, guys. And you know what I'm talking about. Everybody's on edge. Everyone's pleasing that person. Everyone's acting fake and false, phony. They're not acting like their true self. So, I don't know. Don't disclose your personal information to a narcissist. They will use it against you. When I, let me go back to my point. I'm sorry. I went brain dead for a minute. Uh, when I was around my narcissistic mother-in-law, I knew better than to talk about my past, to talk about my family, to talk about what was going in, on in my life, what was going on in my husband's life. I did not tell her anything because I knew, baby. I knew exactly what she was. Um, I'm telling you right now, when you're around these people, you can feel their energy. And so, my experience with that was to be quiet when you're around a narcissist. You don't show emotions. You don't experience anything because they, whatever, I don't care if it's, you're experiencing joy. They will turn that around, try to get attention by being rude to you and inconsiderate and get the attention back on them. Because if you're experiencing any happiness or any joy, they don't like that because you should be focused on them and they will be condescending and rude to you to your face 
while you have a smile and laugh and are happy because they are they they don't want you to be happy they can't experience happiness and joy they fake those emotions they don't know those emotions it's all phony with them they only know negativity they only know how to be rude and opinionated and entitled they don't care about you they only want you to focus on them and give them attention. It gives them a high. They are like a drug addict. And you are their drug. That's how it is. So when it comes to a discard, the best revenge, the best revenge, and this is how you also win, is when they come back and hoover you, you say, I don't want you. I'm tired of this. No more. I am putting my foot down and I don't ever want to speak to you again. That's the best revenge. That's how you get under a narcissist's skin. Yeah, they're going to go around and talk more crap about you, but you stay silent. You don't say anything. You meditate. You cry alone. You do what I cry to your therapist. You, you come cry to your life coach. You cry to whoever you need to cry to, but you never tell the narcissist how you feel. You don't cry to the narcissist. That gives them narcissistic supply. Okay, so you need to watch yourself around them. When they discard you, they hoover you, and you go no contact, it is like riding a bull without any straps to hang on to. It's like riding them by their horns. They are wild animals. They are not humans. So you need to watch out, and you need to shut it down. Go no contact. That's the best revenge you can get on a narcissist. That is how you win the game, is you go no contact with them. That's how you win. It's a horrible way to win, but uh, it will teach their ass a, a lesson not to F with you. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to use cuss words in my videos, but I'm telling you, you need to put your foot down and say, no, you discarded me. You treated me like a piece of crap. You're not giving me any apologies. You're not giving me any explanations. Um, you're just coming here surprising me with a Hoover. Like, no, you explain yourself. If you can't explain yourself or apologize, then I don't want to speak to you again. And what's going to happen is you end up going no contact with them because they will never apologize. They will never apologize. You will never get an apology from a narcissist. So just remember that. So when um, they come back with the Hoover, there's no apology. You go no contact. You say, no, I don't want you in my life anymore. And they're going to beg and put a pity party and put a guilt trip on you. But you say, no, enough is enough. I'm tired of this cycle of abuse. Enough is enough. I'm putting my foot down. No more. You don't cry on social media. You don't put poems on social media about how you feel. You don't, you stay silent. You don't text them. You don't call other people telling them what this person has done to you. Because you don't know if they're a flying monkey or not. You don't say nothing. You stay silent. You give them the silent tr treatment. And it's going to be the worst silent treatment you've ever experienced. It's like that game with the kids where the first person to speak loses. So if you speak, you lose. You want to win the game, you be quiet. Shh. Any, all those thoughts, that hamster wheel in your head, you write them down in your journal. Journaling is the best thing for uh, CPTSD or PTSD. It's the best way. Because you're suffering PTSD for sure. That's why you have that hamster wheel. Write it down, journal, get books, read the books. Go on videos like mine and other people's and reassure yourself that, no, you're not in the wrong for going no contact. You're not in the wrong. Everyone's right here. We're gathered around you. We're your new family. We're helping you through this. Forget the narcissist. Go no contact. You stay silent. All right? It's 24 minutes long. I guess this wasn't a short and sweet video. <laughs> uh, I just have so much to say, guys, and I want to be there for you. I'm trying to coach you through this. I'm really trying to help you guys, okay? So remember, stay silent. No posting on social media. You block them on social media. Um, you make sure that you don't fall for the Hoover because they're going to trick you. More than likely, it will be a positive Hoover, but there's also the negative Hoovers, which is the guilt trips and all that stuff. Don't fall for it.
You say no more. And when they call, you don't answer. That's what I did. When my narcissist called me, I didn't answer. She called me on Mother's Day. Trying to get back in my life. It's been 13 months, or actually 14 months, no contact. Last Mother's Day, she called me with a hoover. I didn't answer. I texted her and said, I'm sorry, but we are no longer speaking to you. Please do not disrupt my family anymore. Thank you and goodbye. Like, that's it. That's all you say. And then when they text back with something ugly or whatever, you don't reply. You don't reply. You've won. The game's over. They've lost. They've been found out. They've been found out. And everyone else that already knows them, uh, about them will come out of the woodwork and hold your hand and be there for you and listen to you. They're not the flying monkeys. They'll come and tell you, man, I got some stories to tell you what that narcissist did to you and what she said about you. But I just don't want to say anything because I don't want to start conflict because I know you and her were getting along. And I just didn't want to start conflict. And so the whole time that you were getting along with the narcissist, the narcissist was going and talking shit about you behind your back. That's how they work. Because they know that eventually this, they're going to discard you. And they're going to have to explain to people uh, why they did. And they know eventually the no contact is going to come. And they want to make sure that uh, those people are on their side. By telling negative stories about you. Made up crap. Things that aren't even true. So, anyways. That's the discard from the narcissist. That is a positive Hoover uh, example, a negative Hoover example. Uh, I hope this helps you guys. Um, anyways, have a great day. Um, I just want to be there for you. If you need any life coaching, I will leave my email address in uh, the descriptions down below. You can contact me. Uh, anything, uh, any donations are private. Uh, there's no set amount. And uh, it will help keep this channel alive on top of that. Okay, bye. Love you guys. Bye-bye.